I love my Celestron C8 Smith Cassegrain telescope, uh, both for planetary and deep sky astrophotography as well as visual. I've been considering for a while to upgrade to a large aperture. Um, I just can't justify the cost at the moment. So Bintel's got the C9.25 currently for 2,999 Australian dollars, which is roughly 1,935 American dollars. I think that is absolutely outrageous for an extra inch and a quarter in aperture. However, having said that, recently scouring through Marketplace on Facebook, I came across an ad for a guy that was relatively local to me and he had a C9.25 advertised here for 300 bucks. The only downside was that, yes, it is second hand and it's 16 years old and there was a fungal infection on the inside of the corrector plate. So I went out and purchased it anyway with the intention of cleaning the plate. So tell me, am I mad or did I get a bargain here or have I bought something that's just a piece of shit and unrepairable? We're about to find out. So it came with a case, which I thought was nice. It's always good for when you're driving around so it doesn't get shaken around in the back of the car. Um, and here, I'll take the cap off and you can have a, a bit of a better look at the, the fungal infection on the inside of the plate. It, the guy told me that he'd stored it in a shed for a fairly prolonged period of time and he thought it was moisture free, but obviously it wasn't. Um, but out of the entire scope, the only issue I can see is the fungus on the inside of the corrector plate. The mirror itself looks good. The secondary mirror, I believe, is good. So I'm going to pull it apart and see if I can't clean the crap off the plate and get this thing up and running. So glove up so that anything I touch I don't leave fingerprints on. It's always handy. Um, and basically I'm, I'm going to take the plate off, mark the rotation of it so that it goes back the same way, and I'm going to clean the inside of the plate with a mixture of about 25% isopropyl alcohol, roughly 70% water, diet like distilled water, and 5% hydrogen peroxide so that it kills the actual fungal infection and cleans it off the glass at the same time without scratching or damaging anything. So I'm just putting a piece of blue tape and then I'll slice it with a scalpel basically so that we can realign everything back to the way it, as I take it off it goes back on the same same way so the corrector plate doesn't get rotated so that it doesn't, doesn't uh, stuff with the calibration from factory. So basically we just need to remove the screws from the front of the corrector plate ring. Um, the, the inner ring pops out and then the glass pulls out directly. And yes, they are absolutely tiny little screws and an absolute nightmare to work with, but especially when you're wearing gloves, but it is what it is. Yeah, so the, the guy that was selling this, actually, they're selling up and moving house, going somewhere a little bit smaller. They were on a fairly decent sized property and he had a ton of stuff out there and I'd honestly wish I'd taken more cash with me because he had all sorts of mounts, different scopes, eyepieces, diagonals, extra focusing parts, there was tell rads, there was all sorts of things out there. So. Unfortunately, I only took the amount of cash with me that I needed, but if I'd have taken more, it, it was, I could have had a field day out there. Okay, so now that the screws are out, basically what we need to do is pop that inner ring 
very, very carefully. So I just use a small blade screwdriver down the side of it to try and sort of shimmy it loose a little bit because you don't want to scratch the glass, you don't want to damage anything. It took a bit of doing, but I eventually worked out how to get it. There it goes. Okay, so that's the ring that holds in the corrector plate. Now I'm gently holding it by the secondary mirror. There, there is actually cork packing against the edge of the corrector plate around the outer ring to stop the plate shifting. So I basically have to sort of pry those little bits of cork packing and they, they came out and then the mirror just pops out. Oh, sorry, the corrector plate just pops out. But this is my first time pulling a, a CT apart and I really wasn't sure how this was going to go, so everything is delicately, delicately. This made me so nervous doing this. I really, really wasn't super confident to start off with. There it goes. And I sat it face down so the mirror is not getting covered in dust. <clears throat> so here we go. I'm just going to put a couple of squirts of the isopropyl hydrogen peroxide and water mix and then softly, softly dab with cotton ball and, and work the solution onto the fungal part of the back of the corrector plate and just try and work it off. And I had to do this probably two or three times to get it all off. but. The end result, it is a lot cleaner than what it was. It's still not super clean. I probably should have done a little bit better of a job, but it was all about take your time, keep changing cotton pads, make sure you're not scratching the glass, make sure you're not dragging dust and particles across it. And just little bit by little bit, and obviously don't damage or scratch the secondary mirror. Okay, so here it is back in. As you can see, most of the fungi's gone. There's a couple of little white marks that I can still see, but... Okay, so here's a daylight test. Now I set it up, it's on the HEQ5, which it's too heavy for that mount, but it's just a point. I've got it pointed directly at that tower off in the distance, and here's some live footage in sharp cap. Now keep in mind, the corrector plate was put back on. I haven't collimated it yet because it's not dark and we can't see any stars. So th there's the dish on the tower and it doesn't look too bad. Um, it's not super sharp, but in saying that you can see the atmospheric dispersion, like the, the heat from the day. Um, is basically affecting the vision and the scope didn't have time to cool either. So here we are that night and I'm basically setting it up, doing a three star alignment because I've got the hand controller running. Um, I couldn't be bothered stuffing around with computers and whatever so I've just got the camera hooked into my laptop and the hand controller running the mount. Um, so I'm doing a three star alignment to obviously and then polar alignment to let the mount know where it is. And then we'll, uh, we'll set it up and, and point it towards some stars and see what we can come up with. Yeah, I found out later that the finder scope was a little bit loose too, so it did the alignment fairly well, but 
it still wasn't quite pinpoint on target when I actually started slewing and searching for things to look at through the camera. Okay, so here's after the collimation's been done. The line going through the middle of the stars is actually my clothesline. Um, the scope's pointed straight across the clothesline, but you, the collimation's pretty good. You can see the donuts are all central, and this is me slowly bringing it into focus, and it is manual focus still. There's no auto focuser on it, which I will eventually upgrade because manual focus on an SCT is a nightmare, but that's a whole nother story. So this is with the uh, 715C camera. The stars are pretty uniform across the whole field. There's no egg shapes or weird things going on. Um, and they look pretty pinpoint, so, so far so good. And here they are side by side, the C8 and the C9.25. You wouldn't think an inch and a quarter aperture would make that much difference, but the C9.25 is massive in comparison. Um, so, we've got crappy weather at the moment, but once I get a chance to get out and test it and do some planetary and take some images, I'll uh, keep you guys updated. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, you know the usual deal. Subscribe, like and share, and uh, let me know what you think in the comments.